Day on Rappler. Both chambers of Congress ratify the reproductive health bill, now ready for President Aquino's signature. Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia is suspended for six months for grave abuse of authority, but refuses to step down. And President Aquino catches up with Vice President Binay in the latest Pulse Asia Trust ratings. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. It has been a historic week and it continues. Both chambers of Congress ratify the Reproductive Health Bill Wednesday. Earlier, the Bicameral Conference Committee signs the final version of the bill before Congress goes on Christmas break. Voting 11 to 5, the Senate adopts the Bicam report on the measure. The House of Representatives also ratifies the bill by voice vote. All it needs now is the signature of the president to become a law which may take place before the year's end. Albay Representative Edsa Lagman says the bill retained, quote, the empowerment of women and couples to freely and responsibly determine the number and spacing of their children. Here are the key features of the final version. Parental consent is needed before minors get access to contraceptives and other RH services, except if they're pregnant, have given birth, or had a miscarriage. Both national and local governments must give RH services, including sex education and free contraceptives. Sex education is optional for private schools. And for providing RH services is optional for private health institutions. Members of the House contingent are appointed Monday night after the House passes the RH bill on third and final reading. On Tuesday, a pre bicam conference is held at the Senate to identify the most contentious provisions between the House and Senate versions. The Senate panel includes Senators Pia Cayetano, Bongbong Marcos, Francis Pangilinan, T.G. Gingona, Alan Cayetano, Vicente Soto III, Ralph Recto, and Ping Lakson. Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia is suspended Wednesday for six months for grave abuse of authority. This will go until the end of her term. Cebu Vice Governor Agnes Magpale, a member of the Liberal Party, is sworn into office as acting governor. Garcia, a member of the United Nationalist Alliance, is found guilty of grave abuse of authority in connection with administrative charges filed against her by late Cebu Vice Governor Greg Sanchez Jr. in 2010. Sanchez accused Garcia of diverting the province's budget for allegedly a anomalous contracts. In July, the ombudsman filed separate graft charges against Garcia in connection with the allegedly anomalous purchase of land in Tigaan, Nanga, Cebu for 98.9 million pesos. Governor Garcia refuses to step down, calling the suspension order a, quote, power grab. Garcia says she is not stepping down because she has not personally received the suspension order. She issues an executive order telling department heads that she remains the governor and that they should only follow her orders. Vice Governor Agnes Magpale is sworn in as acting governor after Governor Garcia's office refuses to accept the DILG suspension order. Garcia calls the suspension a, quote, plain and simple power grab. She only has six months left in her term as governor, which is covered by the length of the suspension. She adds, quote, the suspension amounts to a removal from office. Garcia is on her last term. Her brother, Cebu Representative Pablo John Garcia, is running for governor in 2013. He faces the Liberal Party's gubernatorial bet, Hilario Davide III, the son of a former Supreme Court Chief Justice. Davide ran against Gwen Garcia in 2010 but lost by more than 96,000 votes. Her running mate at the time, the late Cebu Vice Governor Greg Sanchez Jr., filed the case against Garcia four months into her term. President Benigno Aquino signs the 2 trillion peso or $49 billion national budget for 2013 into law, allowing the government to front load spending early next year. The 2013 budget is 10.5% higher than this year's 1.8 trillion peso budget. It also incorporates performance management measures for national government agencies. Social services will continue to receive the highest allocation, followed by economic services such as infrastructure programs and debt servicing. The Department of Public Works and Highways gets the second highest allocation with 152.4 billion pesos. Budget Secretary Bud Chabad says up to 400 billion pesos will be spent for capital outlay. 
He expects the Philippine economy will receive a boost from early spending, the start of public-private partnership projects, and increased election spending in 2013. President Aquino catches up with his vice president, Jed Jamar Binay, in Pulse Asia's trust and approval survey released Wednesday. Binay now leads Aquino by only one percentage point in trust ratings. Aquino registers a nationwide trust rating of 80% in November, while Binay is at 81%. In a similar survey in September, Aquino got 78%, while Binay got 84%, a difference of six percentage points. In terms of performance, Aquino posts a 78% rating in November, while Binay registers 82 percent, a four percentage point difference. Aquino's performance rating remains unchanged from a similar Pulse Asia survey in September, but BNI's rating in the same area drops by three percentage points from 85 percent in September. BNI is eyeing the presidency in 2016, while Aquino's former running mate, Interior Secretary Mar Rojas, plans to run for president. He is expected to run on a platform to continue Aquino's legacy. In the United States, as residents of Newtown, Connecticut begin to bury the victims of a deadly school shooting, the top U.S. gun lobby group says its members are, quote, shocked, saddened, and heartbroken. In a statement, the National Rifle Association says it is made up of four million moms, dads, sons, and daughters, and are shocked, saddened, and heartbroken by the news of the horrific and senseless murders in Newtown. The NRA releases its statement on the shooting after initially keeping silent, saying it wanted to give time for families to grieve. Police are on high alert for copycats as public clamor grows for stricter gun control laws. CNN reports in California, police arrest a teenager for making criminal threats online. Another teenager in Louisiana is arrested for posting online that he wanted to, quote, go on the rampage. There's an estimated 310 million non-military firearms in the United States as of 2009, one for each citizen. People in America are 20 times more likely to be killed by a gun than someone in another developed country. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today. A list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five. South Koreans head to the polls Wednesday to elect a new president. In a tight race, Park Gyun hye of the governing Senuri Party looks set to become the country's first women president. But Democratic United Party's Moon Jae-in is putting up a good challenge. He's slowly eating away at Park's lead. The winner will replace President Lee Myung-bak, who's at the end of his five-year term. Formal results will be announced Thursday. At number six. Following the backlash that came as a result of Instagram's new terms of service, Instagram co-founder Kevin Systrom clarifies Instagram has no intention of selling user photos. Systrom blames the misinterpretation on less than stellar wording of the legal terms and ads they're going to move the ads that they're going to remove the misleading language. At number seven. According to a report by a market research firm, Samsung overtakes Nokia as the leading cell phone manufacturer. This is the first time in 14 years that the Finnish company is not on top. Samsung is expected to account for 29% of worldwide cell phone shipments in 2012, up from 24% last year. Nokia, on the other hand, drops from 30% in 2011 to 24% in 2012. And at number nine, Authorities in China who see doomsday believers as a threat to social stability detain at least 93 members of the Church of the Almighty God. According to a report by state-owned paper, The Global Times, the group, quote, brainwashed others into believing the end of the world is near through texts and flyers. The band Christian Cult adapts the Mayan prophecy of the world ending on December 21st, but relates, uh, relates it to the second coming of a, quote, female Jesus. Followers believe the sun will disappear for three days from Saturday through Monday, followed by other natural calamities. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. You click how you feel, and your vote comes down to the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories which have gotten the most clicks on the mood meter. If we take a look today, eight of the 10 stories still have to do with the RH bill, showing you what a historic week it has been. Um, the story that has gotten the most number of clicks on the mood meter is this one in the middle. The bishops to continue the fight against the RH bill. This is before today's vote. 56% um, annoyed, 20% angry, 18% don't care, and 3% were inspired. Um, 
What you're seeing now, though, is most recently Congress ratifies. Here you go. 66% happy. You still have 18% sad and 16% angry, but that large happy contingent going for a historic week. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, December 19, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.